Oh my gosh. Come on, where's my presenter? What if my presenter doesn't come in time? What if, what if my presenter is not? I'm in. I have 21 people waiting, but my presenter is not here yet. Have you scrolled? Yes. And they're not in there yet? Uh -uh. Then there's not much you can do. Yeah. He should. Who is it? Robert Gopin. Oh, yeah. He should be. He's really on point. So okay. Maybe he's watching the keynote. Is it still going on? He knows nothing. Okay. Once he comes on, only admit him. Yes. Watch, watch your participants. Three numbers. Yeah. And so lock it at T15. Um, and then just slowly let people in after that. Can I do that? <laughs> no, if you start watching your participants, even before you admit them in, you're already getting close to T15. Lock oh. the meeting. Okay. Lock the meeting and then admit everybody in. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, once we mute ourselves, they won't hear us. Once I go home, it's like, yeah, I'll stop sharing my screen. I can do it from there, too. Nice. Like my last slide will be you guys can also lock, oh, you're not there yet, but you can also lock the meeting from the, from the, um, from the waiting list. So where they're at, there's also a little three dots. And if you click on that, um, you can unlock it from there too. <laughs> I think he is maybe watching the thing. I just wanted to touch base with him before, but that's okay. I don't want it to look like I'm reading my script either. I know, where do I put it? Is he? Me too. Mine's recording already. Wow. Come on. Yeah, because we're not muted. That's what I worry about when we're all talking, when we're all introducing, we're all going to be talking at the same time. So that makes me nervous. And then also, um, so are you going to hit admit all or are you doing it randomly one by one? No, I'll admit all. She just told me to lock it if it gets too close before I even admit it, and then you can make them laugh afterwards. Oh, like you, like you can admit someone? No, no, I, no. Like, no. If, if while we're in the waiting room still or whatever, I'm seeing the numbers, they're all in the waiting room. If that, when that number, like say before he even comes in, if it gets close to the number, I can lock it from here in the waiting room and oh, then admit yeah. them. Yeah. yeah. And then that way, once you get in and you can start speaking, you don't have to worry about people coming in and bumping the number, you know? Yeah. Oh, yay, he's here. 28. Yeah, in five minutes. Hi, Robert. I don't know if you can hear me. Um, let me make you close. -close. I can't see. I can't. Hello, good morning. Hi, good morning. How are you? Good, just a little nervous. Us <laughs> oh, too, <yeah>. us too. <laughs> uh, 
Um, I can't see you. Did you know? Um, yeah, it looks like my camera doesn't want to come on. Oh, okay. Let me uh, log out and come back in if you don't mind. Okay. presenter left and he has to come back so he's restarting Hi, Robert. Robert, are you there?
All right, can, can you hear me, Melinda? I can hear you now, Robert. Okay, sorry. So I guess my speakers and my camera are giving me I'll be good. Okay, should I go ahead and open up the waiting room? Yeah. Okay, and then I'll start with my, um, my PowerPoint and then I'll introduce you and then if you wanna, if you wanna share screen from there after that. Yeah, sounds good. There's a, can you, Robert, can you hear the background? Um, yes. You can. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Melinda Schneider, and I will be your moderator for this session. Um, I'm here to support both you and your presenter. So if you have any questions or need any help with the Zoom interface, you can use the chat icon at the bottom of your screen and find my name, Melinda Schneider, and send me a message directly, and I will do my best to help your concern. Um, if you'd like to connect with us on social media, you can by hashtagging IE Google Camp on Instagram or Twitter. Again, if you need help, you can directly contact me through the chat. If you need help with the SCED, uh, there's a small little icon right here that can help you out on the direct site. Uh, the title of this session is Instructional Tech Newsletters and Hyperdocs. And here is your presenter, Roberto Guzman from the California Military Institute. All right, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I do apologize for you not being able to see me. Um, my camera is having some issues, so I do apologize about that. So if you could just give me a reaction or something on the bottom right, give me either a clap or a thumbs up that you can hear me, that'd be awesome. That way I get an idea if you guys can actually hear me. Oh, sweet, I can see some clapping there, awesome. Thank you. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get started. I'm just gonna go straight into this. Um, I'm gonna click on share my screen. And I'll click on this. And let me lower this down. I'll go here. Expand this. And give me one second here. Here we go. Go into present mode. All right. So again, uh, my session is uh, instructional tech newsletter and hyperdocs. Um, um, I do appreciate you showing up to my session. Um, if you haven't noticed, I provided the bit.ly or the resource in the sketch. If you didn't get it, it's just at the bit.ly here, bit.ly slash argoostech002. Um, and so again, I appreciate you showing up to my session. And you might see, or excuse me, you might hear me speed up a little bit here and there. And I do apologize, I tend to get nervous and I start rambling on and I go really, really fast. So I do apologize about that. But let's get going here. All right, so a little bit about myself. Uh, my name is Roberto Guzman. I am a tech coach at the California Military Institute, which is part of the Paris Union High School District. Uh, my, my Twitter handle is rgoosetech. Uh, there's my email if you have any questions. Um, you can always just reach out to me after this session or whenever you'd like. Uh, just a little bit about myself. Um, I'm a rugby enthusiast. I love rugby. I've also coached and played rugby. So that's a picture of me over there on the top right hand side at the USA Sevens where South Africa beat Fiji in a last minute uh, or excuse me, last second uh, score. It was actually a very exciting game. That was from this past uh, February. And also have a gif of just different trips that I've taken in the last two years, predominantly based on food 
and some friends, but I just wanted to share that there. And then the graffiti that you see here, the wall over here is a, a mural painted by a friend of mine in uh, Sicily. And it, it features two judges, uh, Falcone and Borsellino. And both of those judges were actually killed by the mafia, uh, the, the Sicilian mafia to be exact. And so um, a friend of mine from Dallas went and actually painted that mural. It's about 25 by 20 feet at the local school there, a little small town in Sicily that I've had the pleasure of visiting the last couple of years. Okay, so just a little bit about myself. Oops. All right, a little too fast. I'm sorry, I got a little, uh, little trigger happy there. So the title talks about hyperdocs, right? So I'm gonna read this real quick. What is a hyperdoc if you don't know? A hyperdoc is a Google document that replaces worksheet method of delivering instruction, adding innovation and inquiry-based learning methods. It's full of instructions, links, graphics, and any other tools needed for a student to complete a task. It can be used in class, balance flow between teacher, direct instruction, discussion, or as flipped work. In a collaborative, easy to use for individuals, partners, group or work. This is this resource here is actually from this a part right here. So if you click on Highfield Hop Copy Hyperdoc resource, this is directly from Lisa Highfield. Uh, she was one of the three innovators that actually developed a Hyperdocs. So if you're not familiar with that, uh, it'll take you to her resources there. And actually I'm gonna click on this real quick to show you. And it's just a Google Doc showing you some of the things because that's pretty much what a hyperdoc is. It's just a Google Doc where you add a bunch of links in there. Uh, and she shares a couple of things, some ideas. So it's pretty awesome to go through it. So I just wanted to show you. And the other thing I wanted to show, oops, keep clicking and getting click happy there, was the uh, Hyperdocs Academy, this resource here. And some of it is paid, so just be aware of that. But the important thing I wanted to show you here was the find. There's templates, samples, and some hyperdoc stuff that you can find. Uh, sorry to be redundant there, but yeah, if you click on the find on this website, it'll take you to templates, samples, and hyperdocs. And that's where all the cool free stuff is at. So that's what I wanted to add that there for you. Okay, let me go back and make sure I'm, I'm not speeding up too much and I'm not skipping any questions. So my apologies here. All right. I guess I'm a little frozen here because I minimized my thing. Okay. So again, I apologize about this. I, I can't see some of the controls. It's just my one of my first times actually using Zoom, so I do apologize about this. So here's uh, one of the reasons why uh, I'm gonna transition to the, um, to the newsletter part of this. Um, teachers and students in the world sometimes feel like this, and especially since March uh, during our pandemic, some teachers and some students have really felt like this in education. They feel like they're alone in the world. You know, you're going and try to find information and everybody else is out there, but you feel some loneliness, you know, you feel like this disconnection. And we have to remember that we have to connect to one another as teachers, teachers connecting to teachers. And of, of course, teachers connecting to students, right? That's why teacher clarity is very important more than ever during this distance learning. Um, and so I took this picture because I really enjoy it uh, because sometimes, like I said, you feel like this in education, you feel like the only one out there and you know you don't know where to go. You might be at a, a point where you're looking for some direction but you can't find it or you're looking for resources and things like that. Um, and if you don't recognize the image, it's actually from uh, Bunker Hill, uh, it's a park in downtown Los Angeles, although it's been uh, photo edited, there's some things that have been taken out. Uh, Grand Central Market is over there to the left hand side, but it, the image is from a movie. Um, 
something about 500 Days of Summer, I believe is the name of the movie, but I really enjoyed it. So I added it to the presentation here. But again, it's about feeling alone in the world uh, as an educator uh, and not being able to get resources. Now, if you're new to ed tech or you, you're not as um, experienced with ed tech, there are plethoras of resources, whether it's the ed tech team, Google certifications, the trainings themselves. Um, oops. The trainings themselves in the Google certifications will get you to know a lot of things. So I strongly encourage you, if you have not gotten a certification through the Google training, do either level one and eventually go to level two. Um, and you'll learn a lot of things. There's a lot of resources there. Uh, the Journal is an online magazine that shares a lot of information. Edutopia, love it. Don't know if any of you are um, readers of Edutopia. Obviously, Computer Using Educators, uh, Q, that's a great resource. Um, ISTE is another great resource. Start partaking in some of that. You know, we're all here together because of the Riverside County Google Camp. Amazing. Um, I believe this is the fifth year, right? Yeah, the fifth year. So. It's awesome. I've partaken in all of the years here at the Riverside County Google Camp. Um, another cool thing that's out there is the Leading Edge Educator. That'll give you a lot of resources as well. And then most importantly, down here in pink, I added this pink and yellow to kind of catch our interest, was a PLN. That stands for Professional Learning Network. And it all starts by attending conferences and getting to know some people where you, you get connected to like-minded individuals or people that have that same passion and drive as you, uh, or that just have a hobby of something. Uh, and it benefits the kids greatly when you can connect to people that are like-minded to you. And then the other ones that are out there is um, the social media as well. Um, and that's where you can connect your PLN is either through Twitter or Facebook. I was actually added recently to a Facebook for distance learning educators. And I've actually learned a couple of new things on there. Um, and I'll, I'll attach that, give them that Facebook uh, group uh, later on at, after the presentation, because it was just something recently that happened. So I'll share that with you guys at the end. But again, there's all these resources out there. Um, and to me, the biggest resource is Twitter. Um, and if you're not using it, it's okay. You don't, you don't have to have a Twitter account um, because you can just go look for things by using hashtags. The hashtag is how all these things get connected. Um, so for me, in order to start getting connected to people, the most important thing is create a Twitter account. Um, you can use your name, uh, try to keep it as professional as possible. Uh, my Twitter handle is rgoosetech. R-G-U-Z, you know, my name, Robert Guzman. And then the T-E-C refers to Technology Education Coach. So that's the catch there. Um, I came up with a specific name uh, because you want to brand yourself as well if you really want to look at it that way so that you, people can recognize your name and things like that or make it personalized. But keep, remember, try to keep it professional. If we had a little bit longer, I'd tell you a little story about how the tech part got added on, got added on there as well. Um, but it worked out for me that it relates to technology education coach. Um, tweak deck. Okay, if you're a Google Chrome user, you use that um, browser. I'm gonna click on this. I'm gonna show you what tweak deck is like. Oh, sorry, this is the, the actual link. My apologies. I thought I had it on here, but here we go. I'll, I'll go to mine directly here. And I'm sorry again if I'm going way too fast. Okay. So this is Tweet Deck. This is Twitter on steroids. Do not be overwhelmed by what you're seeing here. What I want to show you is this this one right here in the middle, or towards the center left, that shows my home page and the people that I'm connected to. Shows it shows the NPR. And if I keep scrolling down, it talks about Thin Air Labs, blah, blah, blah. There's some cool stuff going on. RCOE's tweets from IEK, um, 
i.e. Google camp, excuse me, uh, the Wall Street Journal, some more NPR stuff. And a lot of this stuff are just different people that I've connected to, like Jimmy Apodaca, um, you know, Dr. David Platt sending some stuff out there, Sonal Patel from San Bernardino County. Um, and so what starts to happening is that you see all these resources there that are free. Uh, people are sharing things all the time. There's Brenda Harris from Pinnacotti sharing some stuff about what she's learning at IE Google Camp and things like that. So you can see all that here in TweetDeck and you can add different columns as you can see here. Uh, you can see the IE Google Camp one that I added. Um, and then there's another one specific to my school. But um, it's great because those resources are there for you. Um, I'm gonna go back here real quick. And so, what starts to happen is that you start to gather information. Uh, a colleague of mine by the name of Chad Chainer mentioned that Twitter was like Niagara Falls in regards to information. You know, you sit at the, at the bottom of Niagara Falls with a little Dixie cup and the information coming out of Twitter the information coming out of Twitter is just like the water calling coming from, um, oops, excuse me. I apologize, there was a phone call coming in for me. Um, so I was saying that the water coming out of Niagara Falls is, is just like the information coming out of Twitter. And if you stick a Dixie cup out there in Twitter, you're gonna get a lot of information. And all you need is about 30 seconds to a to two minutes a day to gather information and resources that are relevant to what you want to do in your classroom or that are cutting edge, things that are happening uh, and things that you want to get um, hip to, and if I can use that phrase. So it's, it's something that's really, really resourceful. Another thing I'll, I'll actually mention is educational chats. And you can click on that link and actually I'll click on the link to show us and the educational chats are all around the world and you can find an actual chat by just looking at the hashtag there's a description there and then the time as when it happens on twitter and all you do is you just put a hashtag on that on one of those columns like i showed you on TweetDeck, and it'll you can start partaking and you can start seeing all the dialogue that's happening okay and again i don't want to overwhelm you with this because it's something that you ease into. It's something that you, you start doing little by little because it, it can become overwhelming. Again, my biggest um, plug is to be a lurker, lurk for two minutes a day on Twitter if you've never done it. Um, take a look at the hashtag IE Google Camp, the one that's being used. There's gonna be a lot of resources that are uh, being shared and excuse me I wanted to see if I could come back again I apologize I've I'm having a lot of difficulties with this all right so I'm looking at the questions right now real quick. I apologize if it's, um, I just wanted to go over this real quick. Yes, uh, TweetDeck is a Chrome extension. Uh, apologies about that. Thank you, Melissa, for asking. Uh, Noah, do students lurk on your Twitter deck? Are they allowed to? Um, they can. Um, just That's a very good question, Noah, because it. you have to remember that if, if you're going to use Twitter for for education, right? You gotta remember that you wanna keep any personalized ideas, politics and things like that, at least in my opinion, out of it. So you can have a personal Twitter account and then you can have an educational Twitter account. Um, I only have an educational Twitter account, which is my professional uh, Twitter account. And so I just make it relevant to uh, educational topics and things like that. Um, the other thing was, um, 
my mind went blank. Again, I'm getting a little nervous. I guess I'm talking way too fast. But um, yeah, you, you want to separate your professional and your personal on, on social media. That's a, a very big thing. But going back to my students lurking on my Twitter deck, I'm sure they do. Um, I connect my stuff to my school uh, social media because I'm always posting images and things like that. So they can see that I'm there. But again, it's my professional one. I only post school related stuff or educational related stuff. Sometimes some rugby stuff just to let them know what I'm doing. Um, and I know some people get a little nervous about that. But, you know, just remember, you, uh, thank you, Tina. Uh, just remember um, that you want, if you're going to do Twitter, have a professional one, an educational one, and then you can have a personal one as well, uh, where you can share with friends and families. But if you just want to have one, just keep that in mind that kids will find your stuff out there as well. So um, the other thing I was going to say is the other reason I, I, we push for Twitter a lot is that I want to say before our, our current president, about 75 to 80% of users on Twitter were educators. Educators were the ones that were thriving on Twitter and we still do. Sorry, I'm typing an answer here. Um, and so, you know, it's still a great resource, but again, uh, all social media outlets can be a great resource if used uh, correctly and appropriately. Um, but again, I plug Twitter, I'm all about Twitter. All right, and I'm gonna look at the chat real quick. Uh, if anybody has any other questions, I'll look at it real quick. All right. Okay, so let me go back to my screen share and resume the sharing and I do apologize, let me lower this down. Um, and so we talked about Twitter, TweakDeck and, you know, educational chats. Um, and again, you know, I have friends on Twitter that I've never met face to face and others that I've uh, met when I've gone to a conference and we were in the same session and we eventually just chatted up and it's great because again you, you know you're sharing information with like-minded individuals so do not be overwhelmed by Twitter and that, as, as everything that I preach um, take it at your own pace nice and slow okay so Back to our technology newsletter, right? Why do I keep plugging Twitter and this this thing? Well, the reason is that it gave me the idea of creating a newsletter for my school site uh, because I wanted to create uh, uniformity, uh, sharing of information for not just one or two individuals, but for everybody in my school. I wanted everybody to have access to the same information to connect all of us so that our students would benefit from this. Uh, so that was one of the main reasons why I created my technology newsletter. Uh, and it actually came from the idea of attending one of Lisa Heifel's session way back uh, in one of these Q sessions back in like 2014. Maybe, yeah, 2014 is when I, I attended her session. And then the idea just spawned from there. But again, in, in a in a school, it's all about connecting to your colleagues and making sure that everybody has information. But the other point I wanna make is being able to provide various tools and resources because not everybody, not all of my colleagues are the same. They have preferences, right? As individuals, we all have preferences. There are things that we like, things that we don't like. So I keep that in mind when I'm creating this tech newsletter. But again, the whole thing was just 
to connect all of us and to benefit the greater good of our students because that's what it's about as as educators we want to do what's best for our kids oops i keep going back with my mouse all right so here is this the cmi technology newsletter um there's a glimpse of it that's it's nothing fancy it's just if you look at it it looks like just a bunch of tables with information on it right um, I have a parent resource and again I use the bitlies there there's information regarding to posting grades from semester two Google certifications canvas stuff which is canvas is our learning management system in our district information regarding contacting technology digital template for current events bouncy balls if you haven't seen this this is really really cool uh, Google bouncy balls it's a really cool little website where you can measure the sound uh, by the amount of balls that are bouncing up and down. So it's really, really cool. Um, but again, this is just an example of the last one that I created back in June for my, for my colleagues. Um, and again, my resources are coming from Twitter, uh, things I come across from my professional learning network. Um, and the other thing is from questions that I get because if one person has a question, that means that two or three of my colleagues are also gonna have another question. So I like to post uh, guides that are related to uh, questions that have been asked. Okay, so how did I create it? Well, all I did was I took a Google Doc I added a header. I added some tables because that's all it is. That's a three by two, right? Three by two on that one. And then on my individual tables, all I do is I add a hyperlink. And if you don't know what a hyperlink, it is just this little button you click on, you highlight the word math learning, you highlight it, then you go up top in your Google Doc, you click on that little icon that's there in there, and then you insert your link, drop it in, and it becomes a hyperlink. Um, and there's three links actually within this one here talking about math uh, manipulatives. Um, but that's all it really is. It's nothing too fancy. Um, like I said, I started doing this back in like 2004, 2000, 2014, excuse me. Uh, but again, it includes a header, tables, and links, brief descriptions as well. As you can see, there's just brief descriptions of what these different things are. Uh, and I write all those. And I forgot to mention one thing. I try to do this every two weeks. I try to send something out every two weeks to my, to my staff. So it's a bi-monthly newsletter. Uh, and I try to make things relevant. And sometimes there's themes, as you noticed. Let me go back up here. Um, posting grades, end of semester. This was in June. Um, I try to focus on things that are happening at that time. So getting towards the end of the semester, obviously I'm gonna put some guides up there to refresh the memory of my colleagues on how to do some of these things. Sorry, I'm gonna go back to these uh, the questions over here. I apologize. Um, I can, uh, I'll see if I have a little, enough time, Tina, at the end to see if we can do that. I am going to share a template with the one that I already create. Uh, Guadalupe, when you refer to teacher accounts, can, can you be clarify that a little bit more? Uh, Noah, uh, the newsletters are specific to uh, teachers, but students and family members do have access to some of it. Um, some of the guides, because it's for teacher only or teacher products, uh, the documents themselves and the guides are limited to staff. So if they were to click on some of those links, some of those links wouldn't work because I've limited it in the Google Drive to just staff being able to view them. But um, that's a very good question, bring up families and students. Um, and that's another thing I was going to bring up later on, and we'll have an opportunity to talk about that. Uh, 
keeping them in mind when creating some newsletters. Okay. Yes, uh, Noah, the second part of your question regarding uh, sharing information with parents. Uh, and actually, if you look at in my slide, and I shall, I'll share again. This part right here where it says bit.ly uh, CMI parents, uh, you guys have access to it as well. If you type in that bit.ly CMI parents, it'll show you an example of a tip, very simple document that I created for my parents, uh, where it shows what our learning management system is, our grading system, uh, how to access our website. It, it's just information that, that goes out to them. And I do it in English and Spanish because we do have a lot of English speaking parents at our school. Uh, our school is made up of, um, I forget what percentage of Hispanic students, but um, I, I, do, I do keep them in mind. I do something else for my parents as well. Um, I do some tech trainings as well for my parents. So I create guides for them. We walk them through uh, the grading book, uh, the learning management system and other important things that are beneficial for them to learn to in order to have a great student uh, success. Oops. So let me pause here. Let me see if I don't have any other questions. Uh, Kim, uh, the, your question about posting the newsletter on the website, I could, but the intention itself is not for the actual parents and students, the ones that I have. My specific newsletter is just for my audience, which is my teachers. Oops. All right. So sorry, I'm just going back and forth again. I'm just trying to relearn this. All right, so we're gonna take a look here at my two-step process. How did I do this? Because I got about 15 minutes left and I'm gonna go through this real quick. Um, so what I do is I create a document with notes and I'll show you what that looks like. It's nothing fancy. It's just a Google Doc and I just, when I'm in Twitter, I grab the link that's shared I give it a, a title, as you can see here, Creating a Positive School Climate. There's the link, Alumni News for CMI. Uh, that was a resource that I grabbed from Riverside Poly High School. Um, that's some awesome resources on how to keep your alums involved with your school, but also to use as a motivational tool for your current students so they, they can see where, they're, where students from Poly High School are going so that it motivates the kids to be successful in school and also to keep that connection because a lot of people feel that once you graduate, you're like, there's a disconnect. You're no longer part of the family at your school, but no, you're always part of the, that school. You're always part of the, the family at your school. But I thought it was a very relevant source that I found from Riverside Poly. There's flip side science. Uh, then as you see here, there's something that's highlighted. That means that I probably used it. And as we scroll down, you'll see a bunch of other ones. There's some other ones that I've used, like the bouncy balls one. There's the actual website there, Google training, blah, blah, blah. And there's other ones. Again, uh, the ones that I use, I kind of highlight. And so when I create another one, all I do is I go to file, make a copy, and I delete my highlighted ones because I know I used it. And so for my next newsletter, I, I get rid of the ones that I already use, and I have all these other ones that I haven't used. So I have some resources I can add. And, and that's, that's how I do it. It's nothing fancy, nothing fancy, but that's the system that I use. Okay, and you know, you just add notes and links to anything relevant to helping teachers and students in your classroom. And then the second part, you got a glimpse of it already, where it's, it's talking about um, our, Google Doc, you make it into a hyperdoc just by inserting tables uh, with the amount of sections that you want. Um, 
you create one, you make it and you make it a template and then you just keep using it for the next newsletters. I usually use my previous one and I just delete all the information that was there. Oops. We got trigger happy again. I delete all the information that was there. And then in the segments, I just summarize, I give hyperlinks, quick overview of what it is so that if my teachers are interested, they'll click on it. It's kind of like clickbait, right? Information is there, they can click on it. They go to it if, if it's relevant to them. If it's not relevant to them, then they don't click on it. But it's a two-step process. I have one document for notes, and then my second document is my actual newsletter. I'm gonna pause my share and see if anybody has any questions. Any questions on this? Yeah, um, Jay Newman, I, I think it's important for them to know that, right? You know, alums are, they're, they're part, they've always been part of it. So keep that connection because you never know, you know, some kids might still need that to motivate them and to move on. Oops, let me go back here. All right, and I'm, I'm toggling back and forth and looking at the questions. All right, so what exactly does the newsletter do for me? Uh, and again, I'm, I'm a tech coach, I'm a TOSA. It's a little different um, depending on what your position is at your site. Um, because again, my newsletter is geared towards my teachers on promoting products, uh, showing a uh, better use of certain educational products and showing trends in ed tech. Uh, and the one thing I do want to mention is that I focus on pedagogy a lot of times. It's not just about the tool. It's about um, the end result. Is it going to be an effective tool for our kids? Um, because that's one misconception that people use in ed tech is that they're just talking about the shiny new tool when in reality, they have to focus on the pedagogy, what's, what works, right? What's actually gonna be effective? What's gonna be beneficial for kids? But again, the newsletter, what does it do for me from experience? It creates water cooler conversations, okay? Um, when I'm going and grabbing coffee or tea, I run into somebody, somebody always mentions some, something they read on the newsletter. It provides an opportunity for me to connect with them and try to get them the resources that they, they need. It, it allows me to get some questions and answers. Some people will email me regarding what I shared in the newsletter. And then the other thing is that it starts to create teamwork. You start to work with individuals in groups of individuals that wanna do something that you shared with them. Um, and again, it's all about sharing information with everybody at my site. And if, you know, during the normal days, when I'd be walking around campus, I get questions, people are hollering my name across the halls, um, that they have a question about something or, hey, I used that one thing and it was awesome. Thanks for sharing it. And I had no idea that they were actually using one of the products that I shared with them. So it creates conversations on campus. It creates conversations with my colleagues. And that's one of the reasons one of the other intentions of this newsletter is that we want those conversations to occur because it allows for progression uh, and better use of tools. Now, um, I'd like to see how you would like to create a newsletter, what ideas you would have for a newsletter. Uh, I have a Padlet. I'm gonna click on it here. It's gonna take us to this Padlet. And if you give me a moment, I'm going to send it to everybody here as well. So I sent it to everybody in the chat as well. Absolutely, Tina, I just saw your question. Um, uh, but I, I don't want to get ahead of myself. Um, so if you can go to the Padlet, you know, minimize your screen, uh, you can click it from the chat and just on the bottom right, there's a little plus thing right here. You click on that guy, and then it'll give you an opportunity to post something. And you can put your name up there if you like. If you don't want your name on there, it's fine. But all you do is you just click on that guy, you give it a title, idea, and then, oops, mistyped idea, right?
enter. Whoa, that was quick. Awesome. So let's like take like 30 seconds to look at some ideas from the participants here, how you would use it. Connections. Awesome. Library resources. That's, that's a pretty good idea. Program updates. Personnel news and topics. Classroom applications. Yeah, you can have students share uh, answers like this on these Padlets. This is called Padlet. So if you click on the top left-hand side where it says Padlet, it'll take you to their website. You can create an account and it'll let you use this for free, by the way. There's a limit on them, but. Cool. Classroom applications, absolutely. And Tina was talking about during distance learning, this might be a way to share information to your class, uh, a weekly update, letting parents and students know what was covered, uh, resources that you have for your class, right? What other classes are doing? Absolutely. School counseling program, but it's for parents and students, yeah because we can't forget about the social and emotional uh, side of this as well. And especially during our time right now, uh, during this time, it's very important that we keep that in mind uh, because we don't know what it's like at home for some of our kiddos. And so we gotta make sure the resources go out to them as well. Great ideas, awesome. Well, give us another uh, 10, 15 seconds. And don't worry, this Padlet will be there forever. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll be looking at it, you can look at it get ideas for everybody. Thank you very much for participating in the Padlet. Awesome. Communicating with parents, great. No, it does not erase once you exit. This one stays there. This is, it's a, it's there, it doesn't erase. You'll always have access to it. As long as you have my, my presentation, you have the link to it, or you can save the link that I sent you. Okay, so I'm gonna transition back to the presentation because I have five minutes actually. I talked a little bit more. Um, so thank you very much, all of you who shared your ideas on the Padlet. Again, the Padlet is always there. Um, you have access to it whenever you want. Just remember by going to my presentation here, bit.ly rvustag002. Um, we have tech tutors at our school site, peer tech tutors. Our kids um, help other students with guides, fixing Chromebooks and things like that. I forgot to mention we are a, we've been one-to-one -one for six years. It's all part of our Scholar Plus initiative, but our kids, uh, I had kids before create student newsletters. We didn't do it this last year. Um, they weren't too fond of it. They were more into fixing the Chromebooks but I have had kids create newsletters for themselves. Uh, we also transitioned to having a Google site. Uh, so it doesn't have to be a Google doc. You could possibly create a Google site and then just have a, a, a new sub page for every newsletter that you create. Um, one of my colleagues, uh, Dietra Lee at Paris High School, she was doing a, uh, a Padlet uh, for uh, a newsletter. So you, I'll give you an example here so you can see. This is what she was doing. And she just posted information like this and she shared it with people. You know, just post it's up there and it's relevant to sharing information to uh, colleagues and you know, how to use it, giving them resources. So it's, this is another way you can use uh, a newsletter. It doesn't have to be a Google doc. You can use Padlet for it as well. Okay, so I created a template for you right here. You can click on it uh, in the presentation itself. It'll, it'll give you a template from mine. And then you can access all my published newsletters if you wanna look at that stuff, if you, if you wanted to, you can just click on the link there. So that's there for you. Um, ah, I'm getting click happy. So I am gonna leave this here at questions. I'm gonna to go to chat because I have three comments I can see. And so, 
Digital close reading resource is awesome. Thank you, Norma. Um, I think Noah, regarding your question on the Padlet, I think it's anonymous. Like it, it doesn't show you who posted what unless you tell them. But I think you, you can control some of the Padlets by making them password sensitive so that nobody else accesses them. And so that's what we do. We, we, we can make it a password one or it's just for our kiddos because we don't want other people to access it outside of our school. Yeah, you'll always have access to it, Joyce. Absolutely, thank you, Marielle, for sharing that. So does anybody have any specific questions that they'd like to ask? Yeah, through the bit.ly, Tina, it'll always be there. Or you can always email me. And actually, I'll, let me move to the next slide and I'll, I'll show you my, my information there. In case you guys have questions, you can always email me. Um, there's my Twitter handle as well. So you can always you can always email me, that's not a problem. Just let me know what, what I can help you with, uh, what question you have. Uh, my I'm always available, even if you're not part of my district, it's okay. We're allowed to help other individuals. That's what it's about. You're not, a, you're not alone. You're not alone, we're all in this together. Um, so um, I'm gonna open up the chat. Thank you very much for attending my session. I hope it was informational. I hope you enjoyed it. I apologize for the, um, the tech issues. Um, it's kind of embarrassing being a tech coach and then you have these tech issues, but it happens. And you just roll with the punches, just like what happens in the classroom. You know, you just roll with it and you go with what you have and you try to make the best of it. So I'm gonna focus on the questions on chat or if anybody would like to uh, ask me a question, I will stop sharing my screen uh, and you can ask me questions. Thank you. Also, uh, I just wanted to let everyone know that you guys can go into SCED and we would appreciate your guys' feedback um, on today's session. And then during lunchtime, we're going to be having these two uh, speakers, if you'd like to join. And then, Robert, I'll let you uh, just continue asking questions through chat. All right. So um, thank you very much, Melinda. Uh, I appreciate your help today. Thank you for being a uh, co-host. Um, so I'm looking at the chat questions real quick. Um, again, the session ends right now at 1020. I'll stick around. Don't worry about it. Um, your next session is at 1030. Make sure you look at your schedule. What you got next. Social science teachers I recommend on Twitter. Um, nobody's popping into my mind right now, Guadalupe, but um, we can look for some. I can help you out with that. Thank you, Tina. Thank you, Jeffrey. Thank you, Jamie. I'm sorry, what was that, Norma? Was somebody asking a question? I missed it. I'll turn my mic off if you want to ask that question again. Yeah, so if anybody has questions, go ahead. Um, I, I can turn my mic on. Um, I don't know if you guys can. I thought you guys were available. I thought you guys could turn your mic in case you wanted to ask a question. Hi, Robert. This is Melinda. I'm sorry, but I actually have to close out the session so we can open up the next ones. <laughs> no problem, Melinda. Thank you very much. Again, thank you, everybody, for attending. You can always access my bit.ly. Uh, have a great day. You reach out to me. Take care. Hope you enjoyed it.